Today's topic is data viz. So let's get into it. You will see I linked to a unit about data visualization. So you could always check that out. Um, in this unit, you'll notice that we have some choices for uh, which libraries or packages to use to perform data visualization. And so I'll be leading us through using a package called Plotly Express, and I'll show you some docs and some examples of that. We'll be working with Plotly today, but there are other options. And if you'd like to explore these other options for making data viz, then um, that's, that's available to you as well. I've had uh, the best experience using the Plotly package. So that's the one that I'm going to uh, share with you. Let's talk about DataViz for a little bit. Before we get into implementing DataViz in Python, let's just talk about it at a high level. So I'm going to go into screen share mode. So hopefully you can see the slides. All right, all right. So for about a decade or so in industry, um, a lot of the work that I did was business intelligence focused. In other words, uh, just making data dashboards. This is very uh, popular kind of function in business these days where businesses and organizations have a lot of data, um, but the raw data may not tell a story. It might not be interpretable until we synthesize that data a little bit. I think we talked about this during one of the first classes when we were talking about an information hierarchy where we transform data, raw data into information and then transform information into knowledge. And so you could think about data viz as helping us along that process of making sense of some kind of raw data. And so the purpose of data visualization is to, I think, just tell a story and help humans interpret the data very quickly and intuitively. So when we look at a data viz, we should easily and quickly see the story that it tells. That also means that uh, we should just try to keep it simple and not do too many things. If we need to tell two stories, we'll make two charts and that's all good. So each chart should be very simple. Um, if anybody reads The Economist, you may see some of the charts that they make. I think their charts are terrible. So we'll teach you how to make better charts than The Economist. They don't keep it simple a lot of the time. But anyway, so we want to be telling a story with these data viz, and we also want to keep it simple and include chart and axis titles. So we'll, we'll implement these best practices in a few minutes. Data viz could take the form of a map. So if the color here, if a darker color denotes higher percentage of female composition in a state legislature, what story would this map be telling us? Any volunteers? What kind of story does this tell us? Here we have by state in the US, each state is colored by the percent of their state legislature that's made up of females. At least this is from 2016. Any quick lessons we could learn just by glancing at this map? I'd love a volunteer. Feel free to unmute yourself. So I'm hearing maybe there's certain regions where we might be able to see there's a higher uh, composition of female legislatures. Okay, cool. Anyone else? Other lessons or stories that we're, we're telling here? Exactly. So we could just now look at the color and our human intuition about color, which is darker, which is lighter. Now that helps us form that story. So it's easy for us to see that these very light, light shades are very low composition of female legislature, uh, females in the legislature like West Virginia, um, some of these southern states. And then what is this? Wyoming, maybe Oklahoma. Whereas in, I think this is New Hampshire or Vermont, I'm not sure, sorry, uh, North New Englanders, this is a high con concentration. And then I think this is Colorado has maybe the highest. And so anyway, now we're just learning and we're telling a story with one, one visual. And so that could be a map form. All right. So <laughs> let's see, let's see. All right, this is a, 
interactive data viz that I created in a past company. We were uh, our our startup did film streaming as a service like Netflix, and we were trying to keep track of well how many people are or, or how many films are getting viewed per day. And so this chart shows the results of that. So I'd love a volunteer. These this essentially is a line chart of film viewing session hours. So it's hours viewed, hours people were viewing films on our platform over time. So what story does this tell us? Volunteer? Can we see any trends in this chart? Yeah, I think so. We see that, look, the viewing hours were so small in 2011. Wow, this is so old, 2011. But then starting in 2012, they started to pick up a little bit. And then 2013, those were staying strong and picking up even more to the highest levels by 2014. So, so this chart is able to tell that story in one glance very quickly. Whereas imagine if we just had the raw data, it would take us, I don't know if we were able to synthesize that story so quickly. So data visualizations can really help us tell a story very quickly. And uh, you can imagine this would be something to include in like a, a slide deck for investors to make the point that, hey, our, our, our viewership is increasing over time. So maybe you should invest in our startup. So we could use DataViz to kind of uh, to uh, support certain points that we want to make. But also, we could use DataViz to track certain metrics that we care about in a business or organization. So if your organization cares about, well, how many hours are people watching, then your organization should keep track of that. And then you could visualize that over time. And what that does is it tells you, are we meeting our goals or not? And so DataViz is a, a big part of that. Uh, dashboard report uh, data reporting process. Okay, so we talked to, we did some examples of data viz. In general, we talked about what it's about. Now let's transition into doing data viz in Python. So we'll see that we have many options. Let's see, we could use a, a package called matplotlib. Matplotlib is very old. <laughs> but it's mature. So a lot of people may use matplotlib. So you might see a lot of data viz in matplotlib, but just know it's more mature or older. The docs I don't think are as helpful and it's not my favorite. Um, there is a data viz library called Plotly and it's and a version of it called Plotly Express that I like a lot better. And so we'll be, I'll be teaching you Plotly Express. And there's other, um, uh, options as well. So with each of these options, we'll be able to make data viz with using different code. Like this would be some matplotlib code, I guess. Um, and that will make a pie chart, some plotly code that will make the same pie chart. So we have some options, but let's actually start to do this. I'd like to start us off on line charts. So let's take a look at how we are supposed to make a line chart using Plotly Express. Are there any docs to help us out? I've provided these links up here. Let's see if any of this is helpful for us. Oh, and I should be using the in-class version of this. Okay, great. So let's check out these links. Plotly, line charts the Plotly Express line function documentation. I think these are the two docs that we could use to get started. So let's see what how we do this. All right, I guess if we want to make a line chart in Python using Plotly Express, this is a third-party package. All of these options for making data viz are third-party packages, which means that if we're using them on our local computer, we'll have to pip install them. However, in Colab, like some of the other, have we used packages yet? I'm not sure. Um, 
I don't know if we've used any packages in Colab yet. I think I've shown you examples of packages like those NLP examples we were doing in the first few classes, how we might need to sometimes install a package into Colab before we use it. And so with the Plotly Express package, it's so popular that it's already installed in Colab. Let's just take a look at that before we move on. Can we use this Plotly Express package in Colab? So does anyone remember how do we ask, well, what third-party Python packages are already installed? Does anyone remember the command that we'll use? I'll do it down in this practice section. What packages are installed? Is Plotly Express already installed? Thoughts? All right, we're definitely going back a long time here, but we know that we could use pip list to list all of the packages that have been installed. And in Colab, since this is a terminal command, we could prefix it with an exclamation point. Just know that if you wanna see what packages are installed, exclamation point pip list will show us which third-party packages are already installed in Colab. We will see that Plotly is already installed because it's one of the most popular packages like the rest of these that we see are already installed in Colab. Let's take a look. So Plotly, here it is, it's already installed. That means that we don't need to install this. If we wanted to install it, we would say pip install Plotly, but it's already installed, so we're good to go. Now we can just use this package. Like modules that we've been using, like the random module, like the statistics module, the math module, the OS module, we know that in order to use any functions provided by those modules, we'll, we'll first have to import them. And the same goes with packages. So that's what we see here in the Plotly Express documentation. After installing as necessary, we'll definitely need to use import the Plotly Express package. Here they're aliasing the package as PX, and so we'll just do that to follow conventions. Once we do that, now we're able to invoke certain functions that the Plotly Express package provides. Specifically, I'd like to draw your attention to this line function. So this is not the best example because this df variable is some provided data that this package also gives us so we can make example charts but it's in a format that we haven't learned about yet it's in a format called a data frame data type and so we will look at data frame data types next class um, and so this example isn't necessarily the best to get us started i'll show you a better example to get us started in a sec but what we can see from these docs are that I guess, okay, we're going to invoke some kind of function, maybe this function called line provided by the Plotly Express package. And then we'll just provide a bunch of parameter arguments to this function, and that's it. So that's data viz in Python. Choose your chart function to make the chart that you want, and then just pass some parameter arguments into it. So I guess if we want to learn how to use this line chart function, we'll need to consult the documentation for that function. So that's where this second link comes into play. Uh, let's see. The second link about the API reference to Plotly Express's line chart function. Let's take a look at that as well. Whoa. <laughs> This is a function called line from Plotly Express. Look at all these parameters. This might be a little bit intimidating. We'll start by learning the, the basic parameters. We basically just have to pass data to this line chart function, the X axis and the Y axis. We'll pass a list of values for X. We'll pass a list of values for Y and that's it. That's all we need to do for the basic implementation. There's other ways to customize the chart, like orientation horizontal, certain colors, 
uh, adding a title. And so we'll get into some of those customizations as well, but let's do a basic example first. So it will be very important for us to always keep up a reference to this line function documentation so we can see what is possible. Remember when we were using like a function like sorted, there was various parameters that we can pass. Do we want to sort ascending or descending? Those were parameter arguments that we could pass in. And so we're dealing with a similar thing with this line function. All right, I've talked about it way too long. Let's actually get into it. And I'd like to draw your attention to my notes about Plotly Express. I think I dropped them in today's agenda. Plotly Express package notes. Let me share with you how my notes are structured just so you can find them helpful and then we will actually do some charting together. So in my notes about Plotly Express, you'll see two different sections. When we get into using Plotly Express, the first and most basic way that we could use these functions like line or bar is to just pass in x equals some list of values and y equals some list of values. I would say that this, in this approach, we are working with raw data. These raw list of this Python list of genres and viewers, for example, we'll do bar chart in a sec. But the point here is all we need to do is x equals some list, y equals some list, and that's it. And so you'll see a number of examples here that expound upon those, uh, just us passing some lists in, like using colors, and you could leverage these docs. And we'll be focusing on this top section today. Once you get to the section about data frames, stop, because we don't know about data frames, we'll start learning about data frames next class. What we'll learn is that there's this tabular data structure called the data frame, which represents like a spreadsheet. And a lot of packages build on top of that data structure. And if we have that data structure, we could use Plotly Express in a slightly different way, but we'll leave that to next, next time. So we'll just focus on the top section here. All right. So the way that this works is, I guess, can we make a line chart by just passing some data into this line function? Let's try it out. I'm just going to do some scratch work at the bottom. And then I'll share this with you in Slack as well. So if we want to make a line chart using some example data, perhaps, like months equals January, February, March, and sales, or I guess viewing hours equals 100, 150, 250. Here we just have some basic lists. And so what you could see is that these lists need to be of the same length because the first item in this list of months must correspond with the first value in the list of hours. So what this is really saying is that during January, we had 100 viewing hours. During February, we had 150 viewing hours. During March, we had 250 viewing hours. And so we could easily make a chart in Plotly Express. First, we need to import uh, the package. So we'll say import plotly.express, which is kind of weird. Express is a sub module of the Plotly package. It's like a sub component within it. We'll import this package and we'll alias it as px. So now anytime we need to reference this Plotly Express package, we'll do so as px. Now we can just follow the documentation. How do we make a line chart? Plotly.express.line, and then we pass in x equals some list, y equals some list. So let's do that. I'll do this first one, and then you can help me with some next ones that we'll do. So at a very simple level, all we need to do is px.line. Line here references our decision to make a line chart. Otherwise, if we want to make a different kind of chart, there's a different function for each different kind of chart. X equals R, well, we'll have to choose one of these values to put on the X axis, and then Y equals the other 
So I'd love a volunteer, which, which of these, which of these lists or, or values do you think we would want to put on the X axis versus which one do you think we would want to put on the Y axis? Any thoughts about this? I think there actually is a right answer here. Yeah, I hear month on the X axis. And I, I agree with that. I think we, if we are dealing with some kind of time-based component, it should always go on the X axis. And we'll see why it helps tell a good story. Um, so if months goes on the X axis, then we'll put hours past that list into the Y parameter. And that's it. Now we'll run the cell and we should have a database. All right, we did it. So I'll share this in Slack with you. All right, cool. I just want to pause, see if there's any questions about what we did so far. What we see are that the values are on the y-axis, the viewing, and the x-axis has um, the months. I think by putting the time on the x-axis, this now intuitively tells us a story of what's happening over time, left to right, we're increasing in time, whereas the opposite wouldn't, wouldn't make much sense here, I think. I think this is a little harder to read, like January, February, March, uh, our time is going up. That's not very helpful. So, okay, great. So what we'll see is that this chart looks kind of bad. Um, we, don't, we don't know what our Y values are about. We can't tell the story. If someone is looking at this chart, they don't know what is increasing over time. So what we'll do is we'll try to put some um, descriptive elements into this chart, like a title and axis labels. So let me share with you how we'll do this. We'll polish up this chart and then we'll move into uh, doing this line charts together. Then we'll do bar charts together and then we'll leave you to do some of these other ones. Uh, we're kind of, we'll see how much time we have left. We got to get into some of these customization options here. So I guess we want to polish this chart a little bit. We want to add a title and labels. Let's consult the docs about this line chart function. Is there a way for us to add a title? It looks like there is a parameter called title. And what does it do? Well, let's see. <laughs> We're just looking at all these parameters. OK, if we pass a title, it should be a string and it will be the figure title. All right, let's try it out. So in addition to passing the X and Y parameters, we could also give it a title, like title equals uh, viewing hours by month. Cool. Now we see the title, it's helping to start tell that story. But we should also have X axis and Y axis labels as well. So like what, I guess, let's enforce the, the concept that we're looking at viewing hours on the Y axis. So how do we do that? Is there some kind of axis labels parameter? All right, there's this parameter called labels. So how does it work? Let's see. Labels, we could pass a dictionary as the value to the labels parameter. And I guess uh, each key in the dictionary will correspond to like one will be the X and one will be the Y axis. So this, this doc might not be the most helpful, but I'll show you how to do this. So we should always try to add a title and labels to our, to our chart. The way the labels works, I think is that we use a dictionary and then we say for the X, we'll give it some type label. And then for the Y, we'll give that some label. And so here we're passing in a dictionary value to the labels parameter. 
it's okay for us to like put these parameters on different lines if they start to, if there's a lot going on. So you'll see me doing that. We're separating each parameter with a comma. I guess here we'll use a X axis label of like month and Y as viewing hours. And now we have a more polished chart where we have viewing hours, a label and month as a label. And so now I think we know all we need to know almost about uh, to make our own charts. So we are polishing up our charts with titles and axis labels. The only other thing I want to show you about charts is that if we are to make multiple charts in one cell, it's kind of like printing in the sense that we will only see the latest one. Like maybe if we, if we make, uh, so here we only see one chart. If we want to like essentially like print or display each chart, we'll have to do a certain, we'll have to do some, we'll have to show these chart. So what we can do in that case is say figure equals invoke the function and then say fig.show. And same for the second one. Figure equals the results of this function and then fig.show. Why are we able to show this figure? Well, let's see print. What data type is this figure that we get back as a result of invoking this line function from Plotly? Here, we're just making two examples of the same chart, which is not very helpful, but I just wanna show you that like, if you have multiple charts in the same cell, in order to actually see them, you'll need to show them. And here we're seeing that each of these charts is actually its own data type. It is a figure data type uh, coming from Plotly. And so it has certain properties um, like show, and that's how we're able to do that. So. Just a heads up, um, if you want to display multiple charts in the same cell, by default, only the last one will show. So we'll need to use a approach where we store the results in a variable which gives us a figure data type, which we can show. 